Mr Crispin here once again. Behind me you can see my finished workshop and in today's video I'm going to show you the footage I've collected over the last eight months while I've been putting it all together. Uh, we're going to start at the very beginning so here goes. You're, you're alright, I've gone empty now. My answer is zero. Oh, I'm, um, I think I've got that wrong. You might have to come at it from the other end, what do you think? What, this pillar? Anyway, it was easier than rolling it on rollers. Um, yeah. Rollers. Yeah. Today I'm moving machines again and I've got a couple of helpers. I've got Stephen here, a friend of mine from school, and Billy who's my little brother. We've got a uh, big lathe and a uh, bridge port coming as you'll see shortly. This morning we have the arrival of a Harrison lathe and a bridge port milling machine and I've uh, hired a machine mover with a uh, crane on the back of his truck to transport them for me. So you can't come any closer to the end than that. Right, so yeah. Okay. Try that. Yeah, you through. You through. Fingers. Should spill one of them out. Right, right. About the back now. Yeah, we've got two. Well, we've actually got two loops at the back. Be clear, clear, yeah. Come down. Wonderful. Well that's the lathe and the milling machine in and they're cleaning up quite nicely. Uh, next up I've got to do a bit of rearranging because a cone lapper has turned up that wasn't in my original plan. Uh, to move this I'm going to have to adjust the position of the tool and cutter grinder and you'll see that next. Well thanks to Phil Brooks of Brooks Machine Tools I not only ended up with a cone lapper I ended up with a shadow graph as well which is just what every 23 year old wants and so uh, the cone lappers ended up down there and the surface grinder, shadow graph and tool and cutter grinder which I acquired from Richard Radcliffe. So next up it's a trip to my hometown of York where I've bought some machines from the workshop of Jack Townsend and Jack was an expert engineer who over his uh, career collected various bits of equipment from his workplaces. Uh, Cook, Troughton and Sims of York was one and ICI of Plastics of Harrogate was the other. Now part two of the challenge was getting them into my workshop but part one of the challenge was getting them out of his workshop because it was December, his workshop was at the end of his garden and the wooden floor in it had gone soft. So you'll see some pictures of us getting the machines out and some footage of them coming in here and uh, we brought them all back up on Ian Burgoyne's lorry. Uh, while I was at it I also picked some machines up from my old workshop 
and you'll see that all next. Carry on. Sorry. Yeah. Probably can't come much further than that. Back in the, in the middle, so. where, where, where's your yellow lines going to be? Yeah. <laughs> there we are. Right, so let's go backwards a bit more. I think that could actually be better 180 degrees round. Down, just. Now I think it was better the way around it was before. I can always move it. Today Harry and I are fitting shelves and uh, this will help me get the workshop organised. Now I've got uh, just about all the equipment in. Now one thing that caught me out was the amount of electrical work involved. I'd rather underestimated it and a big thank you goes to Duncan Ravenscroft who's helped me with lots of wiring, um, sockets wise and machines wise. He's a bit camera shy so I've not got any footage of him. But basically what I've done is I've run cable tray around the workshop and then using SY cable I've got a number of uh, double sockets and three phase sockets to power everything. Now for some workbenches and this is a workbench that I built while I was at school and I had it in my previous workshop. Uh, since then I've added a shelf down below and I've painted it green. Also I've made a plywood top by uh, gluing two sheets together and screwing it from underneath. Uh, however, while cutting it to length, I had a little mishap with my circular saw. And what I've done is I've actually sawn over halfway across the top of the bench. Now, uh, I've searched the workshop for the perpetrator of this mistake, but there's only me in here. And um, although it's an error, I have actually been quite clever where I've positioned it because it's directly above the cross piece that runs underneath. So I haven't lost too much strength wise and all I'm going to do to fix it is I've got a thin piece of wood here and I'm going to uh, glue it all up, tap that in and then put some screws through here. grinding apparatus. Next up I'm going to sort this pillar drill out. Uh, the drill is a Kerry Super 8 and it's a bench mounting machine but rather than have it take up space on the bench I'm going to mount it on a metal frame and you'll see that next. This is the uh, frame here, made out of 2 by 2 inch box section and welded up by a friend of mine called Corin. Uh, I'm going to bolt it 
through here and here uh, so that if it ever tries to fall over it can't. Um, there's going to be a plywood shelf on top and a plywood shelf on the bottom and the pillar drill will sit on top. That seems to have got it. Now this is a lot heavier than the Chinese versions and I'm slightly worried about ending up underneath it. Now the underneath makes a handy storage space for heavy things. Well that's pretty much that and the only other thing I was going to mention was a design point which was that I made this stand so that the uh, bottom of the pillar drill finishes slightly lower than the top of the bench. And uh, that means that should I ever need to deal with anything long, such as a plank, um, this won't be in the way. Well that's pretty much that and uh, there's still plenty of organising to do but that'll be an ongoing process. Now when I started all this I had a house, a garden and a workshop to sort out and I've still got a house and a garden to sort out so still plenty of distractions but my aim is to do one engineering video a month until I can get back on with the steam loco properly. Um, aside from that thank you for all my helpers and to the people I've been ringing up saying any idea why this or that doesn't work. I hope you found this interesting and see you on the next video.